As you heard earlier in the show, North Korea leader Kim Jong-un and South Korea President Moon Jae-in are wrapping up their third summit of this year. The leaders today say they have agreed to make the Korean Peninsula a land of peace after 70 years of hostility. They also want to rid the area of nuclear weapons. The three-day meeting ends tomorrow. And joining me now from New York City is Gordon Chang, Daily Beast columnist and author of the book, Nuclear Showdown. Gordon, welcome back to the program. Thank you so much. Once again, this is a promise from North Korean leader Kim Jong-un to denuclearize. And today's announcement has received mixed reviews. In your opinion, was there progress today? There was progress, but it wasn't much progress. These are gestures that Kim Jong-un is making. The biggest thing that he promised was to dismantle the Yongbin nuclear complex, which is their only pl plutonium reactor. But he's conditioned that on reciprocal promises from the United States, which have not been specified. So this is not really the advance that we were hoping for. You know, at this point, we would like to have seen a lot more progress. Um, and clearly, uh, the Trump administration is frustrated. Does this validate concerns that North Korea does not intend to live up to its promise of denuclearization? Well, it looks that way. I mean, Kim Jong-un said the right words. Moon Jae-in, the South Korean president, clearly wants to push Kim in the right direction. And he wants to do that because Moon understands that, bef that before the North Koreans give up their weapons, there's really no choice, uh, there's no chance of unification of the two Koreas, which is Moon's overarching goal. So, you know, Moon is a little bit helpful here, but at the, when you step back and look at this, um, there's a lot less here than the first appears. Well, as you say, the thaw is happening between North and South Korea. How should the U.S. use that to its advantage? Well, the United States just needs to convince both parties that we insist on the complete dismantlement of North Korea's nuclear weapons program before there can be these joint inter-Korean uh, development projects that Moon wants and before there can be any unification of the two Koreas, which is what Moon wants. And certainly Kim Jong-un wants that as well. Um, so for us, uh, I think it's almost using um, the threat of sanctions. And, and sanctions are really important because they're the only things I think that will move Kim in the right direction. So in June, President Trump said that he didn't want to use the term maximum pressure anymore because we're getting along. So do you think the U.S. is sending mixed signals when it comes to enforcing sanctions? Oh, oh, certainly mixed signals, Lauren. Um, you know, President Trump had a very effective maximum pressure campaign where he cut the flow of international payments to North Korea by about half. Um, but sort of since middle of May, end of May, um, the administration has signaled that it's not that it was not going to really uh, apply with full vigor the sanctions. And so, for instance, um, the administration did not designate about 36 Russian, Chinese, and other front companies. And because Kim Jong Un changes his front companies all the time, that really allowed Kim to hollow out the sanctions. Also, you know, we've allowed the Chinese and the Russians and even the South Koreans to violate the sanctions openly. Um, so Kim is under understanding that the United States is giving him this opportunity um, to do the right thing, but Kim's not taking advantage of it. And I think President Trump's going to have to go back to that maximum pressure campaign. Well, as he just told our correspondent at the White House, Mark Irons, he said, we will. Gordon Chang, Daily Beast columnist and author of the book, Nuclear Showdown. Thank you for joining us.